the relentless reptiles here as well. Oh, we got a split. Hey! Hey, hey all right. What's going on, yeah. on Drew? How you doing? I'm good. This technology yeah. thing always befuddles me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm the same way. I'm lucky I got Brenda here. She fixes everything for me. She makes everything <laughs> work. Behind every man is a better woman. Oh, she's way better. Yeah, yeah. She's way better. Oh, you hear the AA? <laughs> she says hi to you too, yeah, Mr. Drew. What you up? So, <laughs> oh. how, are, how are things in Maine? Uh, cold, but but doing okay. I mean, yeah, we're just uh, one day at a time. That's how I roll. I, I feel yeah, we're the same way over here. We're the exact same way over here. Looks like we got a few people hopping on, which is awesome. Excited to hear about stuff and uh, yeah. hear what makes a good education. Educator, and uh, I was hoping maybe we could get a little bit of your story to get it kicked off. All right. Uh, you, you, what's, what's your passion? How'd you get into it? Uh, well, it's my mother's fault. See, when I was growing up as a kid, I always, always loved animals. I was always outdoors flipping logs and ass end up in a tidal pool somewhere. Yep. You know, I was just anything, anything to do with nature. And of course, when I was a kid, you know, we didn't have internet. We didn't have Animal Planet. We didn't have any of that. Even Steve Irwin wasn't around when I was a kid. And, you know, we, I mean, we were lucky if Disney showed something on Sunday night. Yep. Um, Nova, Nova just came into play. I mean, so we had some animal thing. Wild Kingdom was like it. Merlin Perkins and Wild Kingdom. And usually when they showed things, it was like, African wildlife, wildebeest, you know, lions. And, and it wasn't really like all the little things that I was really into. But I was always in libraries reading books. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I even tell kids, books are the way to go because books have to be fact-checked. Books yeah. have to be edited. Online, anybody can put anything and there's no facts to half the stuff you see online. It, maybe agree. even more. <laughs> and so my mother hated animals. <laughs> Okay. And so I, I would, you know, of course, be outside and I would sneak frogs or, or snakes into the house. And I didn't have proper setups. And of course, they'd get out. And my mom was the one that always found them. Yep. And, you know, my mother got mad at me one day. And, and she said, when you're old enough to have your own place, you can have all the animals you want. Oh. <laughs> Ta da! So I always tell young mothers, be careful what you wish on your children because, you know, the mother's curse is real. But really, I mean, a lot of it was because of fish. I was allowed to keep fish. And because I kept tropical fish, I was curious on, one, where they came from. So I started learning geography. And then, of course, with fish, you have to learn chemistry. And then I learned that rocks could alter the chemistry, so I had to learn geology. And then I wanted to get beyond the plastic plants. Um, and I wanted life, so I had to start learning botany. Yeah. And then I started finding out that certain fish, you couldn't get them certain times of the year. And I'd ask why. And they'd say, well, it's dry season or it's rain season yeah. in this part of the world. And so I started learning climate. And then it would be like, well, how about this fish? It should be time to get this particular species out of the Congo region. And they'd be like, well, there's a civil war going on there. Yeah. And it's like, so I started learning geopolitics. Yeah. Because, you know, it's like, well, wait a minute, the fish I want, I can't get because there's a war going on. And I started learning about all these things around the world. And um, I, you know, Greek and Latin all came in because mm -hmm. I started talking with adults as a kid. And, you know, well, why is this called this and not? And then we started breaking all the things down. And so really fish to me are still my first love. I uh, I love fish. I mean, I wish I could have more aquariums with fish in it. Yeah. Uh, and maybe when we move to our new place, I'll definitely set up one or two tanks for me. Yeah. Yeah, you need your own tank. And for everybody out there that doesn't really or hasn't had the privilege of knowing about you, uh, you have a whole facility in Maine, and you do a ton of rescues, a ton of rehabs. How many animals are you building right now? We Right now, we are – probably pushing 300 yeah or so um we're going to be unloading some soon so that's good but it doesn't stop you know and the, and the thing is it was that was one of the reasons i formed the mr drew and his animals too was you know it was it's a passion it's an interest but 
you know, these big box stores came in and they took out all the mom and pop shops. And those were the people that had the, the knowledge, the experience. Mm -hmm. And those were the ones that learned the old school ways because we didn't have, they didn't have all the, like when, when I started doing reptiles and stuff, we didn't have all the UVB lamps and we didn't have all the things that you got now. So we had to keep these damn things alive without any of it. And, and yeah. we did. And I still am very much old school on how I do things. Yeah. Um, with with lots of success and, and and that's one of the reasons why i stay off of social media groups is because i find that you go on these groups and they berate beginners um you know because they they maybe they just forget that they were beginners at one time yeah um, and everybody has their opinion on what works and what's right and it's like you know what many people can have different outcomes but still be right you know, it's uh, people just so close minded on these groups. I stay off of them. But the big box stores took out all those mom and pop shops by underselling them. And I was one of them. I had a store and, and Petco was a big problem. And um, in back in Connecticut, and they I, my motto was education's our specialty. And that's what I thrived on giving education, proper education, and information and people would come to me for the free advice and they go over there to buy the stuff because it was cheaper. Eventually, it just came down to it wasn't worth it. Um, but now, I don't have to sell animals to make a living. Now, I can educate and be there to help people understand. Before you get that pet, let's talk about it. I'm not selling you something. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm here to help you. I'll tell you all the good, and I'll tell you all the bad. Hmm? They're not going to tell you the bad, because they're not going to talk you out of a sale. They're there to sell you, not tell you. Yep. I'm here to tell you why that animal might not be a good choice for your pet. And, you know, in the beginning, it was like, it seemed like a sensible thing. And now I look and realize this is a battle that, that'll never end. Um, yep. You know, just the amount of animals that come in weekly here that people are like, well, they told me at the big box, this, this, and this. It's like, no, 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 that's, that's not right. Um, you know, are we, you know, most like bearded dragons, we get it. Yep. Bearded dragons are wonderful, but most of the ones we get in are sick because they, people were following with the big box. Yeah. Them. And one of the things uh, I do at all my shows is tell them, you have to be responsible. You want the animal, you need to learn about it. Don't rely on them to tell you everything. Yeah. You know, in this day and age, you can get the information. You need to do it. It's not up to them. So. Well, what? One thing was when I was up actually at the expo that you were in Killer. Uh, when I was up there, I kind of adopted that because you've been kind of, even though you may not know, you've been a mentor to me because every time I brain about one thing, uh, starting our own nonprofit, and uh, it made that happen. I started just going to individuals and seeing them and get excited and be like, "Hey, what do you have? What did you just buy?" And you know, maybe they said, "Hey, I just bought a Woma Python." I'm like, "Dude, that's awesome! How are you setting it up?" And I just started kind of what we do now at the expos more so than anything else is we try to grab that one or two or three, you know, people. And we do what you said. We're, we're using the expo to have that be our mom and pop shop where we can stop. Yeah. And I don't know, I can bring them over to somebody like you or I can bring them over to my buddy Nelson at yeah, Relentless. Yeah. I can bring them over to somebody who can say, hey, this is right, the proper husbandry. And this is what you need to do to have your animal thrive. And we need so much more of that in the world. That well, would we do. Change. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. I, I agree. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm all with you. I know we were talking a little while ago about bearded dragons, too. I got three here right now, uh, all that have had metabolic bone disease. And it's just that, uh, you know, the world needs mentors. I need a mentor. We all need mentors. And we all need to be willing to be that for other people. So that's awesome. Yeah, and, and it really doesn't matter, the, like with me. You know, a lot of people will sit there and they'll hire me to do a, a birthday party. And they'll be like, oh, he does kids shows. And it's like, well, you know what? No, it's for everybody. There's no age limit. 202, it doesn't matter because everybody can learn something. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing, you know, how many people walk away or at the end of the presentation will come to me and say, oh, my God, I never knew. Or, oh, my God, I was scared of this. But you put it in a perspective that I never thought of. You know, like snapping turtles. I, I was at a show uh, Sunday, and 
I pulled out a snapping turtle right away. I could see a scowl on this guy's face. And he had a duck, some kind of duck promote, you know, it was L.L. Bean duck thing. And, yeah. and, and so we were talking and he, I could see it as I'm talking about snapping turtles, I could see him kind of like lightening up a little bit. And of yeah. course, my, my snapping turtle, Wilbert, he's eight years old. You can have 20 kids around him. Yeah. And he sits there and lets you rub his chin. He yep. loves the attention. And, you know, now here it is, we're seeing us, you know, maybe every snapping turtle you've ever encountered has been feisty because it's scared. But now he's seeing one in a perspective totally different. And then after that, he came to me and asked so many questions. All right, so, and he did have something to do with ducks. And he mentioned about how one duck had missed, was missing. And, you know, we went on and I said, yeah, yeah. But that, that's nature. That's, yeah. you know, they're not going to come after you while you're swimming, you know, yeah. and try to bite you. They know you're there. You know, and so we, we had this decent discussion. He actually was like, petting him. He's like, this is an amazing animal. I said, that's what I was hoping you'd say, you know, because he probably would want to kill him before, you know. Well, that's exactly the thing. Like, that's how we, we change people one at a time. And that has the biggest yield. And by the way, my daughter has a picture with Ari, your employee, yeah. out with that snapping turtle. And that snapping turtle is absolutely amazing. He is such a chill, cool guy. But people don't understand that these animals have their own personalities that yeah. once they're exposed to you enough and they know you won't hurt them, they're not afraid of you anymore. They, they feel confident. And when people finally figure that out, they go, Oh wait, they're not like a bug that I need to crush. They're not this, by the way, we like bugs too. Um, <laughs> and we like it, but um, once they understand that there's something more to this thing than just fear, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it's awesome. That's a big win for me. Yeah, and, and that's what I, every show I start off, because fear is always the big thing. You know, I, you know, I'm asked to come and I might be asked not to bring something or, or I can tell by children and adults the nervousness or the comments that you make when you first walk in and you're setting up. And so I always start off my presentation with that about the, you know, my, my job is to help you be a little less scared. Yep. And, you know, that it's okay to be scared. It's okay. It's perfectly fine because being scared keeps you safe. But the one thing I ask everybody is if you're scared of anything, try to learn about it. The more you learn about something, the less scared you're going to be. And that's what I try to do is help you be, you know, if I can give you just one tidbit of information yeah. that makes you feel a little bit better and realize the importance of that animal as a whole to the ecosystem, you now can look at it in a different perspective. And by, by hitting children with this information that they tend to retain that and they're the stewards of the planet. They're the ones adults. I always say they're already set in their ways. We're busy. We're working. We have no time. Uh, you know, things come up. I got to do this. I got to do that. But kids soak everything in it. And they're the ones that are going to grow up and go, you know, if I pick up that one piece of trash, I might help this animal out. Or if I do this, I'm going to protect this ecosystem. You know I mean? So it's, it's, it's really important to get them to not be scared because I really get tired of going on groups and they'll have like somebody posting a beautiful picture of a garden orb weaver or something. And then yeah. like you read all the comments below it. It's burn the house down, kill it, destroy it. It's like, yeah. you know, if, if somebody had a beautiful picture of a fawn sitting in the grass and I sat there and said, kill it, you know, people would be all mad at me. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it's like, if I can get them not be scared of that spider or that snake, that's going to have a big impact on everything down the road. So No, I'm with you 100%. And actually, I, I made a cheat sheet for myself because I was really nervous. This was my first time. And one of the things I, I put out there is you don't have to turn anybody, everybody into a reptile lover. But nope. you have to – a success is teaching somebody who's afraid of an animal that they don't have to and how to look at the animal and understand it. Yeah. So I'm with you 100%. That, that's one of one of the things I say with spiders too. Is I'll have a tarantula and I'll say, you know, when you get past the fear, you'll see the beauty. Uh huh. They're and gorgeous. It's very true. I mean, snake, spider, or anything. Once you get past the fear and you understand it, and that that can apply to so many things in life, even in humanity. You know, we get past the fear of strangers and realize, hey, that person is just like me. You know, so. Yeah, yeah. I see in the comments. I got. Uh, it's all about education. I agree, a hundred percent. You know, so, our community, a big thing is all about legislation and about different rights being affected. 
and Drew hit it on the head. I mean, dude, you hit it right there. Like, we can affect the youth. We can affect the young people, the open people. And that's how we make that positive change. That's yeah. how we make that generation better. Because all of us parents know we want our children to have a better life than we did. That, that's our goal. That's, I think, at least that's my goal, is I want my daughter to have a better life than I had growing up. I want her to have, you know, great opportunities. And education's key, 100%. That's how you get the information across. Well, and it's not only, I mean, sorry, it's for everything. Because, I mean, you figure every generation of children's going to grow up wanting some kind of pet. True. And, you know, I don't care if it's a cat, dog, frog, horse, lizard, snake, bird. It doesn't matter. Again, it's the education piece. Yeah. And, and one of the biggest things, you know, you're in New Hampshire and your legislation is different than what we have here in Maine, what yeah. we can and can't have. And that's my biggest complaint with the state of Maine. When I sit there and sit down and talk with, with them is you don't do enough for education. Yeah. You rely solely on me to educate the entire state of Maine on laws, regulations regarding exotic animals. This should be coming from you guys. Yep. And so it's a very big thing. You know, I mean, I'm very fortunate that I do travel from one end of the state to the other and see 30, 40,000 people a year and yep. do as many shows as I do. But that's not getting out to everybody. And that's not, you know, the, you know, there needs to be a thing for our state, especially because of the, our legislation, our regulations are very strict mm -hmm. as compared to yours. You know, but even in your state, sometimes having like we are not allowed to keep sulcata tortoises yeah. in Maine without permits. I am so freaking grateful for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, you go to the pet store and they got this cute little sulcata. Oh, I want it. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's a 200 pound beast that nobody wants. Yeah. And the shelters are filled with I'm glad we have restrictions. You know, you're talking about an animal that lives five generations. It's going to outlive its owner. Why would you have an animal that's going to outlive exactly. you? You can't guarantee its future. So I'm glad Maine does a lot of the things it does. As much as it might piss people off, I'm like, oh, thank God people can't have a, a reticulated python here. <laughs> you know, it's just a 29-foot steak is not a realistic thing. I mean, if you can prove you can take care of it, have it. Yeah. You know? But I think that's the thing. That's the responsibility. I think that goes back to education and knowledge. Yeah. Something we're doing, even though... We we're much younger as an organization than, you know, the reach that you have is we've recently uh, teamed up with a rescue league in New Hampshire and we're going to be going over there and I'm going to be bringing other people and I might see if I can talk you into it one day too, because they want me to help set up a room for reptiles, yeah. a herbal rescue area. And this is a standard rescue. This is a rescue that does cats and dogs, but we've had some interactions and, you know, there's a real need to have these rescues around don't realize how important it is you know we all think about the spca and the way that people you know become so attached to these animals uh, with, with fur and i got three three fur babies in the other room and i got a bunny in that the other room over there i love our furry friends but uh, you know the reptiles need it too and a lot of times you know you look at these reptiles like ball python stuff like that you're talking 30 plus years of of, of life so Remember, there's yeah. really there you have to you have to help other people and that's why i love what you do and that, that part of what you do inspires me yeah it, it's 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 really been crazy because when i i started this whole thing and i am so inundated i you won nothing was planned and never did i expect any of this to go the way it is i mean right now we are so out of space and, and it's like god i need better enclosures and but it's like things are just coming in so fast it's like the key thing keep them healthy just keep them healthy. We'll, we'll, you know, it, it's not the ideal setup, but they're not here forever. We just need to make sure they go to the right place. Yep. We need to make sure that they're properly cared for. Even if the cages are a little small, we'll be fine. We just need to. And so that's why we're working. But it's, it's crazy because, you know, I think about, wow, I have all these animals coming in in this relatively short amount of time. Mm-hmm. What were people doing before that if the humane societies weren't taking them? I know people give them to other friends or they move them that way. Not always the best thing that happens for them. But it's like, how many died? Or how many were released into the wild, you know, um, yeah, prior right. to me? Because it, it, it's mind-blowing that to think, I mean, I go through literally thousands of animals in the mm -hmm. time I've been doing this. 
Um, and it's like, where were they all going before? Yeah, well, thousands, is, I think, is an under-exaggeration. Well, you know, anytime I, I've talked to you, you've had around 250 to 300, and that's always rotating, finding them good homes. I'm going to do, do a shout-out for you right now. If anybody's going out to Man Manchester that sees this, stop by Drew's table, check him out. He's a good dude. Basically, when you're adopting one of his animals, you're basically adopting from one of the best reptile SPCAs, I would put it that way, even though he's not a PA. I got my first reptile from Drew, a bearded dragon. Um, so if if you uh, if you get a chance and you swing by, at least say hi to him. He's salt of the earth, one of the coolest people I know. You're adopting you're adopting one of my animals. You're adopting me. That's right. Well, you are because I mean, the great thing about the expos is you get that mom and pop feel from the good breeders and the good people at the expo. Yeah. If I have a question, I can hit you up any time you've done that. You get back to me in a really great time. And there's a few breeders out there that are absolutely fantastic, too, that do that. And those are the people that we want individuals buying their animals from or rescuing their animals from, the people that support you. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm all about and that was the other thing is I try, you know, like people are like, how come you don't breed? It's like, I've been there and done that. And, you know, sometimes we'll have things breed because we might have to cohabitate because of space reasons. But it's like, there's so many out there right now. Yeah. I don't need to add to the population, yep. you know? And, and, and I'm, you know, I'm all for captive breeding. I love captive breeding. I mean, there's so many success stories um, with captive breeding, but it's like, wow, you know, okay, both, and, and people get pissed at me. Ball python people, slow it down. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. You know, it doesn't matter anymore what morph it is because it's still a ball python and there's 10 million of them out there. I mean, we get so many ball pythons in. And it gets to the point that even though it might be a top dollar morph, people give it to me for nothing. And so I tell a lot of sometimes the breeders, like, guys, I mean, you know, start looking at things that, Somebody doesn't have. Look at things that really fascinate you that might serve a conservation purpose. Uh, and, you know, if you breed something that, that you truly, tr I mean, it, it, I, if you truly love ball pythons, that's fine. I, yeah. I'm not saying don't breed them. But what I'm saying is there's so many, like, it, I don't know. I, I, it, to me, it's just like, let's find something totally unusual and breed that. Well, you know, I'll, even if there's no demand for it, just yeah. the fact that you're breeding something that's normally wild caught, yeah. and now you're breeding it, you're going to make a demand because you're going to have a healthier animal. And that yeah. is the big thing, you know? Well, well, you look at it and it's like, I've got a few animals. I, I have very few animals that are my animals, kind of like you want to have your fish tank someday. Yeah. Uh, I have a Woma python. I got it before it was cool, I think. I got a spotted python in the other room that is just a great animal. Uh, they never go off food. They always have a perfect shed. It's like if you took a python and a corn snake and you mixed it together. They're absolutely fabulous. But I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. And kind of the good thing right now is some people are getting out of the hobby. Not that I want anybody to get out of the hobby. But I think it's uh, regulating itself and going back to basics. And we, we definitely all need to focus on quality and keeping – keeping these animals you know well taken care of well, and yeah. it'll grow it you know you'll see the difference the other thing is i was talking to uh, my friend doug who, who's been in the main herb society forever and we were talking at the last expo we had because uh -huh. we've, we've grown it a lot and i had made the comment about a lot of ball python breeders i said but it was really cool because we had brought up uh, Reptigene and she breeds sand bullets. Yep. I and, I've carried I've carried her stuff for her before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she came in and she's like, I sold out like most of my stuff in the first half hour. Oh, it's like yeah. because it was different. Yeah, you know, and, and that's what people want to see is something different. Um, but when I was talking to Doug about it, he smiled and he says, Yes, but you have to remember, you and I have been around long enough. He goes, it's the ball pythons that created all of you. Uh -huh. Because when, when ball pythons first started coming into the country as wild-caught animals, before Kevin, before Kevin found the spider gene and, and, and did what he did, yeah. um, you know, ball pythons.
ones came in loaded with ticks, mites. They were severely dehydrated. They wouldn't eat anything that we gave them. We had to force feed. For every 10 that came into the country, seven of them died, three survived, and then out of the three that survived coming into the country, two, one or two might have died, and the other two adapted. And you know, by force feeding and getting them adjusted, then all of a sudden, before you know it, those one or two started becoming more and more. And again, it's a success story. We're not taking them from the wild anymore. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, we're getting healthy animals and we're getting beautiful morphs. But again, uh, you know, for me, it's like, I, I would love to see a lot. I would love to see, um, you know, uh, well, the house snakes, for example. African house When I was young, when I was young, house snakes were common. Corn snakes were not. Okay. Corn snakes, corn snakes were rare. Corn snakes came in, they started breeding all the color morphs. Yeah. Everybody got on board. Everybody bred the color morphs. Yes. The market got saturated. And then you couldn't even give away a corn snake. All the house snakes disappeared. Really? Nobody was breeding house snakes. And then Every you couldn't find corn snakes anymore. And when the ones you did, now the market say, well, they're no longer $15, they're now $150, $200 because yeah. there's so few of them. And all of a sudden one day, I just started seeing house snakes again. I'm like, oh my God, they're still here. <laughs> it's like, I missed them. You know, why aren't we breeding those? Or, or you know, why are we still getting wild caught African egg eating snakes? They're such a cool snake. Yeah. But every one we get is wild caught. You know, the, the, the viper boas, they're such a neat little oh, snake. Like viper boas are amazing. I have a buddy who's been trying to breed them for a while. They're, such a cool little boa. Yeah, yeah, but you know, nobody breeds them. And that's, that's something that, like, we're getting them from the wild. And so, why? Why don't, why aren't they, they're live bearers. They, they're like, they're boas. Yeah. They'll breed, you know, if you just give them what they need. And, and, you know, and then if we're not taking them from the wild, and even if you're the only one breeding them, you're going to create a niche for them that yep. is going to grow that so that we're not taking them from the wild. And well, that might be the next hot thing, you know? Yeah, well, do you remember? when uh what was it uh the mexican black snakes remember when they were people couldn't give them away and then all of a sudden for three years like that was the thing to get like that yeah. was the exactly you we all influence what's going on in the actual i don't know if you call it the economy or the market the market and the, the market. reptile Even yeah educators do buy the animals that we bring out to the individual schools, you know, and then, or to people or to groups or like you go out to parties and we just, you know, I, I think in the education community, we're a little bit more like cognitive of the fact, like if I bring out a bearded dragon or iguana, I'm going to explain, you know, the need that these animals have to take care of them. And if you want an iguana, you better get ready for a naked dog running around your house. Um, yeah. with, an then, attitude. with an attitude, <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, that'll, that'll kind of weed out. You, you'll see it weed out a few people, but then you'll see the ones that are still interested and be like, hey, what are you doing? What do you want to be? What are you, what are you into? And you can influence that young mind. Um, so cool. So cool. We've well, been going. And again, the education is important because one of the things I love, you know, I'll tell people, go to the reptile expos. Yeah. If you're looking for anything, whether it's a leopard gecko, bearded dragon ball, python, something unusual, yeah. go. And the nice thing is you're going to have, you know, if you go to a big box store, you might have one tank with three or four animals in it. That's it. Yeah. You go to the expos, you're going to have hundreds, thousands. Yeah. Yeah. And the nice thing is you can talk to each breeder. Mm -hmm. You can go in and say, so tell me about this. I'm interested. And how they treat you. Yeah. It's going to be how much information they give you. That is how you tell. If they sit there and say, listen, are you buying or what? Then You don't need to deal with them. Yeah. If they're sitting there going... Hey, you know, all right, here's my card. And if you have any other questions, that's somebody who's willing to go out of his way for you and educate you and help you. Yeah. And, and you know, there's a lot of these vendors, unfortunately, too, that I see out there that, that we're there for money. And they'll sell, you know, legless lizards that only feed on other lizards, you know, or oh. vine snakes. Or, you know, it's like, why are you selling them something, you know, that's not going to be able to have food readily available? Yeah. And the I animal mean, that's, that's, you know, they'll just sell it. Yeah. All these. European legless, from what I know, are all wild caught as yep. well. So, and, and Ari just posted that we should make that the next uh, next fad because you know what I I bring a legless lizard to my shows and everybody's floored by it because they think it's a snake. Yeah, 
and and they're so hardy overall. Yeah, I go. I mean, they're an incredibly hardy animal. Yep. But, but you know, again, there's. I mean, just nobody's breeding them, and it's like, why not? Exactly. I mean, That's they're so they're so cool. Oh, they're they got li lizards, anything like in that skink family, or like the legless lizards. Like they, they almost have personality in their faces when they're yeah. doing. And when I got mine. I picked them up from a lady who said this. Basically, it was a terrible thing. Uh, she works with another rescue. We won't. We will not highlight the rescue uh, whatsoever. But she told me, like, basically, this animal is the devil. It is a juvenile animal, and she she flat out told me it was the devil. And I got it right before I met yours. I think before I went to the main expo, and I went over there and Ari Ari picked them up and put them in my hands, and I'm like, okay. Okay, this is cool. And I went home and I, I started working with Luna, and she's she's awesome now. Yeah. But it just it, 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 there's such cool animals out there that we could be focusing on and stopping that that taking from the wild. Yeah. And uh, it, you know, there's just a lot of benefits, and there's a lot of rewards to doing something that hasn't been done before. There's huge rewards, and it doesn't have to be this fancy, you know, snake that looks like it has flames going down the side and all the stuff and tricked out like Pimp My Ride. You know, you can be, you can be what, a part of the group that figures out how to get these legless lizards, you know, reproducing, and we got to remember in Europe where they live, they're losing their environment. Yeah. Their environment away. So Habitat yeah. loss is the biggest thing. Yeah, we might want genetic diversity and we have a chance to contribute contributors not just you know individuals to take in yeah i mean you think about it even like with axolotls i mean technically they're extinct in the wild if yep. it wasn't for captive breeding there'd be none left and here it is now we can if we can restore the wild habitat there's enough genetic diversity globally we can restore the wild population and yep. that's amazing it's just a matter of can we restore the habitat and you know, and I see the same thing like here in Maine. I have some Eastern box turtles and I have males, females, and they're, you know, I'm very fortunate that I have them, but by the time most kids grow up, they're gonna be extinct in Maine. Yeah. We are so, it's the most endangered reptile in the state. And people are like, well, why don't you breed them? I've got no place to release them. Yeah. You know, habitat loss is the real thing. And where are they developing the most? Or where do we find them? The Southern part, New York County, Cumberland County. And what happens? That's the most populous part of the state. So as more homes are developed and more lands taken, there's no place to let them go. Yeah, but that's so, you know. And the fact is you're educated on it, so you're being responsible. You could go out and you could breed those animals right now. You could you could breed them every year or every two years, whatever their size is. But you know in order to be responsible for them to have a home and be taken care of, there doesn't need to be out of need. Yeah. But what there is, is you that, and that's you know it's just again it's like it's re education responsibility it's a bunch of things and I, everybody needs to step up is, is what it comes down to you know whether it's self learning or or learning about something and as you know I mean I'm all for I don't know it, it, there's so many things and it's like okay today 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 I gotta get through yeah. today <laughs> no I think like it's it's one day at a time we started this that we're on a year ago and you know as we're, we're moving along we're always defining what it is what's the primary function of what we're going to do and how are we going to make the world a little bit better place and uh that's what inspired me to become you know a nonprofit and to do these similar things yeah was a simple of you know seeing folks like you out there seeing individuals out there that really do care about what's going on out there in the world and make that positive change. I've seen you. I've seen you walk up and you know put a snake in my daughter's hands, a little baby snake, and watch her light up. And uh, you know, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, my my daughter has some OT things going on, so she's working on it. And it, we can't go to Drew's without her building her confidence. I love she her. Loves Drew and Ari are the best to her. Um, and just quite frankly those moments those aha moments those good feeling moments those those changes that you see in them it's just it's amazing and it, it's absolutely amazing yeah i agree i think so hey uh if anybody has any questions too feel free to throw them in the comments brenda will be grabbing I'm, them i'm seeing a lot of hi guys and hi things and and <laughs> ari and all that so 
Hi, everybody. <laughs> I will get, we're, I, we're talking and I'm trying to read and it's like, uh, yeah, I don't want to cut in the middle of a conversation. So. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. It's just tracking and tracking and tracking and going and it's good. Good stuff. Uh, apparently, we're amazing. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, we'll take, take it for what it's worth. Absolutely. Some people, some people might disagree, but I'll, I'll go with it. All right. <laughs> you're amazing, Drew. You're, you're a fantastic guy. Um, go ahead. It's amazing how, you know, you, you meet so many different people and, and, you know, it's wonderful to hear the things and, you know, but I, I try to keep myself simple and say, you know, I, I'm human too. It, 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 you know, I, I, I just, I care. I'm passionate. I love what I do. I yes, want to share. I want to, if I could do everything for nothing, I would. Yeah. If I could just sit there and say, I, I, you know, but unfortunately the world doesn't work that way expenses and money and, and all that's part of life and um but yeah it's just a matter of i you know i still try to remain humble because I, I my my wife will sit there and go you have like the biggest following of seven-year-olds than any other person <laughs> <laughs> and, and, or you know five-year-olds or whatever and it's like yeah that's and i can't go anywhere i mean it's crazy so you know, even at a grocery store, I'll go up to kids, they'll say, I'm just a dude. I go up to them, give them a high five, you know, but I, because they're important. They are. And, I, you know, for them to feel that Mr. Drew did that, you know, uh, it's just something I want to share. I, you know, I want to make their day and I want them to realize that I'm not above, I'm, I'm me. I'm just me. I care and care for everything, people as well as animals. So. Yeah. No, but you make a difference and you could be that person's hero. So, Drew, if somebody's out there and they're watching this, maybe they're watching it now. Maybe they're watching it later when we put it up on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, what does being a good ed educator look like? Say there's somebody out there, they've been a breeder, they want to become an educator. What's their first steps to becoming a successful educator wherever they are, whether it's the Midwest, West, here? Uh, the biggest thing is to be honest and say, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I don't know everything. But you know what? I'm going to find out and get back to you. Because that's the thing is you can't know everything. And, you know, and really, realistically, things change. Yep. Science changes. Studies change. Um, you know, learning that tegus are actually mesothermic and they can actually warm themselves up. I mean, that was never thought of years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, when I grew up, dinosaurs were like, rawr, slow-moving reptiles. And now it's like, no, they're <laughs> feathered, fast-moving I mean, so things change. And it's okay to understand that what you learn yeah. may or may not be right anymore. It's okay. And to say, you know, to, to go with confidence and say things with open honesty... I think is a big part of being an educator because okay. you know you can't go in so pompous and cocky knowing it all because someone will take you down or not. Oh yeah, and I think it's just important. Like I said, I've had kids ask me something. It's like that's a great question. I'm gonna get back, you know, and I will. I'll literally if they write it to me or however, I I'm gonna get back to you on this. I'm gonna email your mom, you know, or however they get a hold of me in the first place, and I'm gonna get that answer for you because I don't know it. And boy. I don't forget it at that point. And so saying I don't know makes you human. If you think you know everything, and that's why I don't like a lot of the social media groups like bearded dragon groups and all that, because yeah. you've got people in there so pompous and so cocky, and it's like, well, I've been keeping bearded dragons for three years. And I'm like, oh, sorry, I've only been doing this 35. I, I you know. Um, but that, that would be the biggest thing is being able to say, I don't know. Nice. Because... I just think it's important that people understand that you don't know everything, yep. you know? I think they look at you in a different light. Absolutely. Um, they, they look at you as a human being and not this person way up here. And then after that, it's being able to learn. <laughs> I used to, when I had a pet store many years ago, one of the things I learned, I had one lady come into my store and she said to me, excuse me, your hamster out back is having babies. Well, I only had one hamster, and it was a male. Okay. So I knew what she was seeing. She was seeing the testicles. Yeah. Because the hamster, when it's sleeping, its balls swell up. They get yeah. big, and they're pink, and, you know. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. That's a male. And those, those, those are his testicles. 
And she's like looking at me all puzzled. And she's like, no, no, I saw your hamster. It's having babies. And I said, no, no, it's a male. And those are his, his testicles. And she was like, no. And I'm like, then I realized she wasn't comprehending what I was saying. Yeah. And so I said, that's a boy. And those are his balls. Oh, oh, it's a boy. <laughs> so I've learned in life when to say caca. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And so I learned you gotta know when to say caca and you gotta know when to say fecal matter. You know, you, sometimes you say, a, so you have yeah. to learn how to read your audience, how to talk to them on their level because, yes. you know, I, I hate it when I go someplace. Yeah. And it's, it's, I, you, there's some people I know, and, uh, and no names mentioned, but you go in and all of a sudden they're talking to somebody who's just a newbie, just a beginner, and they're throwing out all the Greek, the Latin names, blah, 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 this and that. And, and, you can, and they're going on, and it's like, you know, you're just making yourself look like an asshole because this person doesn't know what you're talking about. Talk to them on their level. Yeah. I mean, really, talk to them. I mean, don't talk to them like they're stupid. Talk to them so they understand you. Correct. Because Correct. they want to learn. But if you're sitting there going way over the head, they're going to be like, fuck this. I'm not talking to this guy. <laughs> and so it, it really is important that, to learn when to say shit and when to say caca or poo poo. You know, I mean, and working with young kids, talking about uh, butts, you know, butts getting stung in the butt or getting bit yeah. in the butt goes over with five year olds big time, man. I, <laughs> Saying the word B U T T, man, kids just love butts. That, that gets them rolled. But, <laughs> um, but you have to make it so that they, because that's how they're going to remember. No, and so you need to be able to adapt your abilities. To, and I've gone to yep. school where I could be doing a, a group of five year olds here, and I could be doing a group of five year olds here. And this group of five year olds are highly more mature than this group. Yep. And so I, I, you know, I don't treat them the same. I have to treat this group a little different than this. This group is wily. One kid's sitting there picking his nose and laughing. Well, I, all right, now it's going to be more of a show and tell. I'm not going to talk as much because yeah. they're not there yet. And so you have to be able to read your group. You have to be able to know what's going on immediately when you're talking to someone. Yeah, you Are they going to understand me? If I say lamp repeltus, or if I say, or, you know, is it better just to say what it is? Yeah. Um, so, you know, the common names, I, I get why we have the, the Greek and Latin. I, I like to know that, uh, yeah. but not everybody does. And, and I see it a lot of times on social media. I'll post something and someone will ask a comment and I'll answer their question specifically. And there's always that one person who gets on there and starts getting into all this detail. It's like... Yeah. They, they didn't want to know that. No. You know, no. they didn't want to know that. If they wanted to know that, they would ask me those specific things that you're throwing out. It's nice to give the information, but sometimes it's a turnoff for people. No, I, so you, I, I for the dance floor. That's why I tell everybody. Uh, I rather just say it so you can understand it. So you can. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm picking up what you're putting down. That 100%. You, you have to know your audience. And that's kind of what we do with our animals, right? When we go to pick them up, we start reading their body language. We start looking at them a little bit. I'm not going to handle every snake the same. I'm not going to handle every lizard the same. I know you've done it a million times more than I have. But that's, that's a great educator right there. That's that's a huge tip if they want to go into education. Read the room. Talk to people so they understand you. That's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, and the animals, like, you're right. You know, I, you know, people often ask that. Well, do you get bit a lot or no? Because I pay attention to what the animal's telling me. Yeah. Or if I go in the, you know, how do you know it won't bite these kids? Well, everything has a mouth. Correct. So anything with a mouth can bite. So I ask all the kids, I say, please, I ask you this. If you touch my animals, please don't bite them, okay? <laughs> and, you know, because <laughs> they know the rules. My animals know. And why do they know? Because I went in the cage and there was no reaction saying, like, I'm not in the mood today. Yeah. So, Okay, you're good today. But if you're not in a good mood, you're staying behind. I'll bring somebody else, you know? Exactly. Um, That's but, the thing. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Sometimes uh, on the shows that we do, we'll, we'll get ready to go, and I'll, I'll tell Brenda, and, you know, Brenda's the, ed, the organized, educated one. I'm the, I'm the silly guy that walks around with a snake. And I'm like, I'm going to bring this one and this one, and I'm going to have a theme, and they're going to love it. And then I'm like, oh, and you're in blue, and you're having it today? Okay, I'm bringing these over here. You, you, you got to adapt. <laughs>
you 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 say that about Brendan. That's funny because that's what I say <laughs> to my, my wife. I sit there and say, Susan, Susan is the CEO of the company. Everything happens because of her. She makes uh -huh. this happen, that happen, the employees, the business, blah, 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 blah. She she handles everything. I'm just Ronald McDonald going, hi, kids. Yep. Know, that's, that's me. I'm hey, the clown with the animals. Yep. And, you know, I'm just the face. I, I don't know. You know, someone calls me and says, you know, I'd like to talk about something about, I have no clue what you're talking about here. Talk to my wife. <laughs> that with me with uh when i was asking you about insurance for the program you're yeah, like yeah let me pass it to my wife you know because i have insurance yeah, i couldn't tell her. you how we got it she does <laughs> that yeah. is all no, that's 100 this thing uh, is glued together by brenda she does everything on social media she does all the organizing all the appointments she does the whole thing i'm just my walks in the me 100 yeah. percent that so oh, cool. Looks like we got pretty cool so far. We've had a rotating tour of different people coming in. Uh, if anybody that came in has any questions about being an educator or how to be a successful one, like or what you'd like to see out of an educator. Yeah, what do you guys want to see out of an educator? You know, because, I mean, I still learn new things, and sometimes people will tell me something and go, you know what, I'm going to add that, or I'm going to, you know, I mean, I, I, I can take in, in criticism constructive criticism and I can, you know, sometimes someone will say something like, you know, I'd be telling a story about an animal and they'd be like, well, maybe you shouldn't bring that up because for young children, you know, it's like, thank you for pointing that out. You know, I, you know, I'm very cognitive of what I say verbally so that I'm not dropping F bombs, yeah. you know, but, but I mean, sometimes you tell a story that maybe I was a little more graphic than I should have told them, uh, you know, so, well, you know, thank you for sharing that. Uh, <laughs> somebody very here to you just said uh, hats on snakes what's that Ari said hats on snakes That's oh, yeah no 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 hats <laughs> no hats on snakes sorry no my parakeets are really chirping up a storm here will you guys quiet down God, 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 oh my. <laughs> yeah Ari hates them <laughs> autumn loves birds oh. She goes crazy. We went to our friend's farm and she spent like 40 minutes watching chickens. Well, she loves chickens. Chickens are little dinosaurs. They are. They you are. know what I mean? So they're pretty cool. They're all, I like uh, chickens. What else we got? That's a big no, Ari. <laughs> well, everybody's pretty quiet with the questions, but if nobody has any more questions. I mean, I appreciate you, Drew, coming on. We've been on for about an hour. You've been awesome. Well, thank you for having me. It's been fun. We'll have to definitely do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, guys, if you're not uh, following Mr. Drew, go check out Mr. Drew and his animals too. Drew, where can they find you and find out how to either donate or become part of your organization as far as coming up and visiting you? Uh, where can they find you? Well, you, I mean, Facebook and, and stuff is the best place to find me. It's where I'm usually the most. I don't do the Instagram as much, but it, since they're connected, I can jump on back and forth. Um, and then our website, Mr. Drew and his animals too, dot com. Um, you know, there's a lot of information there about getting a hold of us and stuff. But uh, also uh, the Maine Reptile Expo. Yep, we're working on that. And then we have a Maine Reptile Expo page. And actually, I'm going to be posting the website information tonight, um, which has got a lot of useful information. And we're going to be doing a uh, breeder uh, introduction. So breeders can give us like the little bios about themselves so that customers can maybe pre-order or get to meet them ahead of time That's before the expos. Yeah, so people can use it. I'm looking for a breeder of king snake. Yeah. All right, go to our site right there, tap in king snake, and it'll list the breeders currently breeding king snakes for you locally that you can work with. So we're trying to make it very interactive website. So we're not on, we don't have the breeder stuff up yet, but we've got like veterinarians put on there. We've got you know, the main, in our case, the main laws, um, yeah. we're, we're trying to, trying to make it, like I said, as, as beneficial. I'm hoping that, you know, people will sit there and go, oh my God, so-and-so has the species I want. Uh, yeah. You're coming to Maine. Could you bring it? I'll give you a deposit. You know, so you're kind of booking sales ahead of time, knowing that when I get to Maine with this animal, it's already sold. You know, so I want to benefit the, uh, the, the, the breeders, the vendors, as well as, the consumer and so if you go to the main reptile expo page 
you know, you'll get the updates there. We're starting to, you know, we, I just posted the vendor table registration. We're moving to a new place. We went, we're going to be going from 70 tables to over 150 tables. Uh, we, nice. we, have, we have, we have the food trucks and all that stuff there. Um, and we're going to actually have a concession stand inside the place this year. So they'll be, you know, selling hot dogs and burgers, things like that. Or I think hot dogs only, I don't know. But anyhow, um, and we're going to do, uh, there's going to be little off rooms okay. where we'll have educational talks. Uh, I really want to get more education into an expo. So okay. you can go in and, uh, you know, like one of the veteran reptile vets is going to do a little present, you know, maybe a half an hour talk on whatever yeah. he wants. We're going to have a wildlife rehabilitator, what to do if you find a wild animal outside. Yeah. So it's not necessarily reptile related, but it might be something that someone goes, oh, you know, that would be interesting to check out. Uh, so we're going to, you know, I might do something. Yeah. Just a small feel. Um, and we want more education in there. So, you know, if you go to the main reptile expo, like the page and then get all the updates there. Uh, you can definitely, like I said, like my page and follow me on Facebook for whatever foolish stuff I post. Um, <laughs> I, don't know. I see your stuff. Yeah, um, I no, no, that's. I got this. I got. I got this frizzle working for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a for you at yeah, the expo because you know we're coming up and we're gonna have a table there because we love you, Drew. We love to be there and we hope we see lots of people up there and. Just again, thank you, man. Thank you for coming on. This is the first uh, more Monday, and you've been amazing. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So we will talk to you later, Nate. Give Autumn a kiss for me and your lovely wife. Absolutely. <laughs> True. Oh, wait a Somebody says something here. Wait a minute. Oh, wait. Oh, Gannon. He's a, huh? I know who that is. It's my buddy down in Pennsylvania. I won't, I won't say his name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if he wants his, he's under his cognito name, so. Cognito name? Yeah. All right, it's Dennis. I'll tell you his name is Dennis. Okay. <laughs> Do you guys ever coordinate with the college or DEP program that works with native reptiles? Uh, and asked a lot of things, such as I didn't know if either had experience. I have, I, yeah, up here I've worked with some of the state biologists. Um, to some degree, but they, 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 you know how it is here in Maine, Dennis. They're, they're, you know, they're their own entity and they want to do their own thing. You didn't have to put your name, Dennis. I know who you were. <laughs> I know who Ganymedes is. Anyhow, so um, one of the things they're like, uh, here in Lewiston, where I'm at, we have Stanton Bird Club. There's like 500 acres. It's a nature preserve. It's beautiful. And one of the things I always wanted to do was an atlas, a reptile count there like they do the, the the christmas bird count every year uh, and they were all gung-ho about it because they don't know what's there they, they, it's primarily a bird club that owns it and so they would love to know what reptile and amphibian diversity is there on a, a large scale in that 500 acres and it's woodlands to wetlands to fields to so it's a wide range of things and it but it's you know it's coordinating the time to doing it yeah. Um, you know, because it is a big undertaking. And so maybe someday when I have time. <laughs> we both laugh. Oh, crap. That's funny. But someday when I have time, I might coordinate this, this undertaking and, um, and see if we can get a good, good documentation, at least of that footprint of that area. Uh, you know, because I mean, Lewiston is the second biggest city in the state of Maine, which I mean, isn't saying a lot, but, but um you know to have a, a city where you have 500 acres right in the middle yes. of it it's pretty impressive uh, yes you know so but that's Maine too we can do that um but no it would be nice to do so, so yeah i mean i'd love to do some of that stuff especially with some of the more endangered salamander species that may be in there uh, it'd be interesting to see exactly what's in there so that'd be a cool thing that'd be a, uh, a cool thing to do yeah and, you know i would love to see if i could you know Maybe if I could breed box turtles, could I release them there? That would um, be you know, but they're not native there, so I don't, you know, the state would have to decide that level of, of what 
to do and what not to do. So yes. it would be great if I could breed box turtles and say, you know what, 500 acres, let's start a colony going here and let them do their thing. Um, but if they might say no, and I think that's usually their biggest thing is, no, we don't want to, you know, if they weren't there, we don't want to add them there. You know, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, and over here with us, uh, we haven't really been involved in any of that. We've been involved with different schools, actually teach animal science and veterinary science recently, exposing them to reptiles. And I think we did just build a relationship with an individual in Massachusetts that does timber rattlesnake um, censuses and stuff like that. So we're going to be doing a little bit as far as going into his classroom and working with his students. But nothing on a big scale like that. We're still kind of young, but we're we're all about it. Like Drew yeah. said, it's all about time. Time balancing time. Pass it, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, you guys have been fantastic. Drew is amazing as well, and uh, you're not too shabby yourself, Nate. I'm a little around the edges, but I like.